about Bennett, and he gave me two points. One, that uh, their negotiations suggest that the OS vote, OAS vote cannot be until tomorrow afternoon at the earliest. Uh, they're hoping, though, to get quite a lot of votes, maybe 16 or 17, by taking their time and hauling people aboard and scaring them with the UN. And uh, uh, he thinks that, meanwhile, with Mora on the scene, it would be very bad to pull out the American ambassador. Well, I tell him, tell him that, as usual, we get a no and we wait for them for ideas. Now, what else? Well, actually, I... Sorry to say I agree with him on yeah, that. I, I, think well, I, figured I am sending you Tamp's uh, uh, long uh, cable giving his current views. Right. Uh, and I think there'll be time after you get back for you to tell Bunker just how you want him to play it the first day or so. And then we're going to need, probably need both of them there. But once Bunker is there, if you want to pull Bennett back for consultation, it's a quite different signal. And there'll be someone watching it Good. in your interest, Good. which I think is important. Good. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think things are quiet. I've just been given a piece of Joe Olson's mind as to why we haven't bombed Hanoi right away, and how dangerous things are, and how we seem not to be as brave as he thought we were, and I, I hope cooled him off for the moment. Uh, but, uh, uh, the hawks are hawking. Uh, why don't you get him to go up and visit with, uh, Mansfield and Fulbright? <laughs> Mr. President, his opinion of them wouldn't even be, can, you know, this is that, that's a... Well, he used to come opinion. around arguing me all the time when, when I was leader, and I think it'd be good for them to hear his views. Well, I think that's a damn good idea. I but think it'd be right. excellent. I think it'd be wonderful if uh, if you'd have a dinner party and have a... Uh, have them raise hell with each other. Have married to invite to the Allsops and the Fulbrights and the Mansfields, and then get you one of the couple, Bill. Bill Bundy and the, the two Bundy boys to listen, and and uh, Mr. Uh, and Mansfield, uh, Mr. Olson to eat each other. No, I mean, well, Mansfield won't eat anybody. He'd no. just talk, but uh, he would hear some things and tell Olson he'd just think it's very good that we have a balanced viewpoint here, and that uh, you think it'd be good for Fulbright and tell him Fulbright and Mansfield talk in every meeting I have, and uh, we can't uh, win any wars unless they're on base. I'm just figuring out when I'm going to send them a, a more far-reaching declaration up there, but with these Marines, I don't know how I, how I can continue to put in battalions with, a, with their raising hell like they are, with the New York Times raising hell like they are, without an expression. Well, I think, I must say, Mr. President, I think that the mo one of the most remarkable things in this whole exercise has been how you've held the country together on it. And uh, I think Joe is our most manageable problem. He's always going to want more. That's I know, but I think he would have a little effect, just as I think Lipman has a little effect on me when I talk to him. Yeah. I think he would open a door, maybe, to Fulbright. Well, I'll make him do it. I would just say now, I just want you to, in your own eloquent way, the president does, want you to open a little bit of the door that they have out there. And I'd prepare him on a little of the economic things we're doing, make him read my speech so he can answer when they go to Sam. Economics, I try to talk to him about economics and politics, and he comes back to bomb, bomb, bomb. I know it, but I think if he would uh, look at my speech, say, now, Joe, you take this and read it for just one reason. When Fulbright starts telling you about his Fulbright plan, you can say, I've got your plan, and it's in effect out there, and we're doing it. And, uh, but you can't do it unless you get to protect the people that are doing it. If they kill them, you can't put in as many gardens when they're shooting at your house. And show him uh, the other side, and then try to get Fulbright aboard a little bit. I'll, I'll make a rack at it. Uh, I'll do it this week. Anything else? Uh, those are the items the, uh, uh, that have come up since we last talked. I don't see anything new under Is Tom Mann sick? No, Tom just taking a weekend, Mr. President. He was very bag tired, uh, and uh, he just plain went off to Rehoboth Beach for two days. I don't know whether he's back today or not. I've talked to him. I've talked to several other people over there. What does Bill say about Vietnam these days? He, uh, I had a long talk to catch up with him yesterday. We're all watching the situation in the North. That's the other thing Joe's worried about. He says there are twice as many uh, uh, Viet Cong and North Vietnamese up there as your intelligence people tell you. He's, you know, he loves doom, so that this is normal. But he says people in the field say there are lots more than Max Taylor says there are, and Max doesn't believe in admitting that there are many Viet Cong because he hates the thought of more American boys. And I don't know why you're putting your Marines there if you don't fight. My brother's view is that uh, uh, 
we do have to watch very closely this battle over the next month. He is, uh, uh, on the whole, I think, of the opinion that uh, uh, we ought to be stand firm and keep moving, and there isn't much sympathy in the department for Bob's idea of an open pause, which I'm sure he's talked about with you, which hasn't been discussed outside of a very wide, very limited circle. My own feeling, and I admit that it's just after talking to Joe, and you're right, when you talk to a guy, you've got his ideas in your mind, is that if we're going to have a pause, it ought to be uh, with the expectation that nothing will come of it except justification for something more energetic afterwards. Well, that's why the first one was. That's we right, only we didn't move that energetically afterwards. Joe is way out on a limb that we're just grinding out one note and that we're not bombing is losing its effect and people begin to think we're we don't really mean it. And, uh, well, is that what he thinks about that ammunition depot night for last right in the well, shadow? I don't think he knows about that one, Mr. President. And I said to him, now you just haven't studied the targets, and we are closely aware of the fact that we're moving along, and you're arguing about pace, and you're always in more of a hurry than responsible people have to be. He's reporting a mood which is two-thirds his, and one-third, I would say, that of the uh, field people he's been with. One of the good things about Joe is that when he goes out to a theater, he goes where the trouble is. And naturally, the colonels and the lieutenants and the flyers and the pilots uh, would like to be a little more gung-ho than we are. Uh, that's part of what he's reflecting. I've never known him to go to any area where the blood could be spilled and he didn't come back and say more. This is his posture toward the universe. Um, I would say, though, that uh, there is a problem, uh, or will be over time, uh, of uh, not making it look as if we were only hitting the ones that didn't count. I don't think we're at that point yet. I thought that was a pretty daring adventure, and I'd pull it. It was. It was. But I wasn't going to talk specifically. And I thought it was pretty... And I, haven't I have some before. little question about what those seven megs were doing last night. Yeah, well, apparently they came and went. Well, they're just looking it over, I think, just over. getting ready to sock us. Well, of course, they, they're not there for nothing. And uh, that's going to raise that whole Fukian question, and then you can have uh, Did you look at this, uh, this suggestion of the cover of this memo that he wrote? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can possibly milk out of I that? I think that's a damn good memo, Mr. President. I believe myself that we ought to have I think it'd be better if you'd make. I think you'd make. I think it'd be better if you'd make it a little more readable, or get uh, uh, Walter Heller to cut it down where it's <laughs> some uh, punchy, where you can see really what he recommends. Therefore, I recommend one, two, three, four. I'll get you. And I think that's something you ought to shove and see what they say about it. And make them write one back for it. Say we want one answer to it. Well, well, well. I, that is actually. Uh, the first stage is to probe them as to what they'll talk about, and then if they don't talk, then we consider whether we have an open pause, but only if we know what we're meeting to hit afterwards, I think. Make it for its own sake, it's, it's a dangerous thing. And these things, Mr. President, we've got to talk out this coming week, but I, it doesn't make any sense to talk about them until Bob gets back from holding No, I think that's right. I think you could, though, and be working tomorrow on Anything at Bill Bundy, if he could tell you anything over there on uh, my press, uh, I will. Oh, my press I conference, it might Sorry. be, yes, sir. I will. I'm working on those. And out with old lady Lee. Uh, I've got a lot of complications. She doesn't want cameras, and I don't want television either. And I tried to talk them out of it, but the king. And since we're going to have them, we ought to have some of substance. You can't oh, talk to kids. Big speech, and I think it goes too far. Well, I, I don't want. To, I think that I just think it's terrible. I tore it up and told them month ago to tear it up. I'm just against the White House debating, and I'm against us inside them, and I'm against us inviting them, and I'm against us uh, encouraging it, and I'm against us uh, 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 applauding it. And uh, I think you're going to have enough free speech and criticism and so forth without urging it and, and uh, insisting on it. And I don't want to... Praise in a sentence in a press conference. You don't have to praise it in a whole speech. Yeah, I, I don't want to praise it. I don't... I don't I, I don't think that the President of the United States, Mac, or Bundy either, or Secretary of State ought to be debating ever with crackpots. I just think it's bad enough to debate with Fulbright. But uh, who vote you really have to have. But I think when you get out there, you lift it up where it becomes a national invitation for revolution. Well, uh, so, uh, we'll, uh, I don't want to argue with you on the phone. We'll, I think the problem there is not that you want to lift them
them off, but that you must get in the position where you won't talk to them, and that was what I was trying to do. I don't know. I, 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 I think it was one thing talking to them. Yeah. Uh, I went out and spent, uh, I spent nearly every day talking to some of them, but uh, when you go out and go debating with them, that's a little different, too, because uh, you get the man with the beard, and he comes out, and he's got no responsibility. Absolutely nobody he has to report to. The uh, White House does, and uh, I don't want you reporting to, uh, to Mendel Rivers. I'm just against it, because uh, I know what he does. Were you in there the other day, and he demanded Bob tell him what he's going to do? Yeah. I thought Bob handled it perfectly good by just saying, well, I just can't discuss that with you. There's some yeah. things that I'm above you on. But uh, I think it's good to talk to the, to the all sops and breathe them right into Fulbright, but that's what... Well, anyway, if you can think of anything, what I really think our role in the world is, is to avoid, uh, to, to, to have enough power to prevent, power to prevent, to, uh, uh, weak people from being gobbled up. That's one. And then sharing what we have to prevent people from dying at 40 with disease and starving to death and growing up in ignorance. Now, that's my conception of what our leadership ought to do. I'm doing, trying to do it at home. I would like to do it abroad. If they'd let me, I'd like to take my 50 billion that we're spending on defense, and I'd like to spend 10 or 15 billion of it in these countries where they died 35, in the Africas and the Asias of the world, and I would like to do something about health and education and all these things that are desirable. But uh, uh, I'd rather tell those kids that the Peace Corps started some of this, but they got to carry it out and their responsibility, because some of them have some social consciousness. And you might get a Lawrence Rockefeller or some of them out of these things, uh, out of the St. Albans and cathedral and so forth. I think Lucy's got more social consciousness than I had Very when, when I finished the high school. So I'd like for them to be willing to share and divide and so forth. But um, I don't want to say that one of the greatest moments of my life when I tuned in that television and I heard uh, Han Morgan though. <laughs> because I don't think it, uh, he's uh, that good. Or I don't think Schlesinger is. I think he's a little cute. Uh, but I don't think very wise at all. But anyway, Dick's got that, and I've told him to manage it down, and if you can find a good lead that the kids uh, would, uh, that would be good for the kids, well, you might use some of this, uh, some of this uh, Harvard uh, uh, faculty stuff there you go again. on them. Uh, <laughs> well, if the dean of faculty can't give me a paragraph that will appeal to some of these oh, cathedral schools. I've got to make four speeches myself. I'm well, that's, uh, to make my good ideas. No, you and, just uh, you just get the uh, you know, How you speak? How you tell me how to speak? Here. Okay, I'll talk to you later then. All right, sir.